Oh, oh God, this is hot. I don't know what to do. Oh, oh, woo. Yes. What an amazing pot stand. How convenient and the perfect beginner project. Introduces you guys to some new skills and you're gonna take home something awesome. And we'll do the wok as well. Our burns, burns. Oh, yes. All right, let's get into it. Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about this project, it's super easy to do. It stores away, once it comes apart, stores away perfectly in a drawer at home. And um, like I was saying earlier, suits the pots, suits the woks, anything with a bit of heat, because we want to look after mum and dad's kitchen tops, kitchen benches. From my point of view as a teacher, you can just do it with scrap. You don't need a lot of it. The only kind of key important things about this size-wise is that. Your two bits are exactly the same size, exactly the same thickness. But as for shaping it, the only real crucial bit is the actual joinery, the cross halving. If your curves are a tiny bit different, tiny bit different, nobody's going to notice. Ideally, your holes are perfect, but if they're a smidge high or a smidge low, the thing's still going to work. Um, within reason, you can't really get them wrong. And I'm always a fan of anything that introduce, introduces the kids to marking out, a few new tools, um, and a bit of joinery in particular, I think it's a win-win. Um, today, I'm going to mark out a few. We'll do it in a few different timbers, and um, if I'm in a good mood, I'll, uh, I'll give a few of them away. We'll work that out later. Um, oh, and you don't need a lot of equipment. I'm gonna use a Forstner bit. Mine's a 22 mil. Got my square, got my rulers. We're gonna use a drill press. You could use a cordless. Um, sanding wise, we're gonna use our belt linisher. Um, if you've got a linisher, a disc, disc sander will get a fair bit of it, but it won't get the inside curve. Um, bobbin sanders, portable sanders, whatever you got, as long as you can get some sanding to it, it'll work out all right. And, oh, and I'm a fan of anything that introduces the kids to a bandsaw. Um, 12 mils, kind of borderline, depending on your timbers, if they're nice and soft, you'd maybe get away with a scroll saw, but um, a little bandsaw is the best, best option. I think that's enough chat from me. Let's get into the marking out. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you love what we're up to or you want to check out some of the other projects, make sure you subscribe to Sawdust and Chrome, leave comments, give us a thumbs up, let me know what you think. All right. Oh, and if you're new to Sawdust and Chrome, I'm Moose, but if you're one of my students, you still call me Sir. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's mark one out together. So this is a good pair. Sharp pencil as always, got my square. First thing, check out the width. So these are 42. So I want you to come up 21, I want you to halve it. Give me a 21 and a 21. So for the center of where the force bit goes, I just want you to give me just a little cross. I don't need much more than that. Other one. You can use your first one as a guide. Flip it. So this way you can kind of self-check everything, make sure it's all going okay. That's all I need for my for my force in a bit. That's gonna go in there. They're all the same, that's gonna be perfect. That's for the drill press layer. For the curve, actually, let's do this bit for, uh, no. We do need to do the curve, because I need to know where the top is. So, cut yours out if you want, and trace it. I'm gonna cheat a little bit, and I'm gonna trace one of these. So line it up where you need it. 
Make sure you're happy. So the curve is the same for all of them. Now to the joinery. Please make sure you give yourself a top, sorry, top and a bottom. So find halfway, it should be 10, 10 centimeters. Just check the thickness of your timber. So mine is right on 12. So I'm going to use my square, I'm going to go six either way. Give myself a couple guidelines. And I want you to go halfway. So it's 25. So I want you to go 12 and a half. So that bit comes out. Scribble it, mark it, so you can't get it wrong. Now you can transfer your marks across onto your other one. Make sure everything's lined up perfect. But make sure you mark out the top. So we still do our 12 and a half. And now we scribble out this guy. So, same, 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 same. They're the same, and these are just a little bit obviously different. I've got a bottom marked out and a top marked out. So they slot together nicely. Please make sure you do that. I'll do a few more. I'll put on some rock music, and you guys can uh, watch it in fast forward. Now we're at the drill press. If you're new to using a drill press, please check out my safety videos. The links are going to pop up now or they're in the description below. Um, drill press, this is a big pedestal one for floor, a floor model. Bench tops, doesn't matter. Um, you get away with a cordless drill if that's all you've got. As long as you're nice and safe, um, it really doesn't matter. We're going to use the drill press because it's easy and we've got one here at school. Um, I mentioned Depending on who you're working with, little guys or not, um, you might want to use a, a bench vise of some sort. Um, we're only doing soft timbers. I think I'm big enough and stronger, strong enough to hang on to the piece. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple hot tips. Um, I think that's it. Let's get into it. No, sorry. One more thing. It's best to do your holes after you've done all your marking out, but before you cut your shapes out. Do it while you've got two parallel kind of lines, two parallel surfaces to clamp onto or hang onto. Now's the time to do the drilling. Please always make sure you're nice and safe. And we'll do one carefully. Nice and easy. That's what we want. Move away from that. So the hot tips are, centre punch it, then you can line up with your centre of your force a bit, nice and easy. This is already perfect size, 22mm. 
You want a piece of scrap underneath so you don't damage the back. And while you're drilling, take it nice and easy. And you should actually feel when it just cracks through the back of this and enters this, you'll feel it in the handle. Um, but if you take it nice and easy, you set the depth so it's not going to go too deep, um, you'll be perfect. You guys can rock out and watch the rest of them. Pun walks into a room and kills 10 people. Pun intended. You know the drill. Leave a comment, rate the gags. All right, let's get back into it. All right, great job so far. Now it's the bandsaw. Again, if you're new to the bandsaw, check out the link wherever it pops up and um, yeah, learn a few things if you're brand new to it. Um, please always look after yourselves, wear your PPE. So the bandsaw, um, take your time on it. This is the crucial part. The shape, not so much. If you're a little bit off, it's not a big thing. But please make sure you get your joinery correct because that's where we get to show off how good we are and how much we've learned. Uh, I think that's it. Again, like always, please make sure you're cutting just outside. We're on the waist side of the line. Please. If you go past the line, I can't give you the timber back, but if you're a little bit outside it, we can sand it. And the joinery, please take your time. Make sure you're spot on. So, I was gonna say, watch what I do. So like always, make sure you can't fit a finger through under the blade. Use the guide. Take your time. And keep your fingers out of the way. You guys will be fine. I've cut just outside the line, only just. Please be brave, don't give yourself too much sanding. But I've cut this out so it's the tiniest bit tight, which is perfect because it's gonna take me two seconds to use a file to clean that up. And um, I'm guaranteeing I'm gonna give myself a nice tight joint. All right. I'll do the rest, you guys can rock out. We're lucky enough here at school to have a, a belt linisher. Um, it does a beautiful job on these, so I'm, I'm silly not to use it. Depending on what you've got at home, um, any sander will do, and if you need to, you can just grab a, a file, a bit of sandpaper, wrap it around it. But basically, we just want to get our shape perfect. So um, I'm gonna use the linisher. Depending on what you got, just go nuts. Um, hot tips for these are wear your PPE, as always. Um, just make sure all your fingers aren't anywhere where they're going to get damaged. We don't want to do stuff to, our, to ourselves that we can't grow back. So um, that's it. You, I'll take my time. I'll get my curves. Um, the boys here at school hear me say it all the time, but once you've done sanding, your hands have to like what you've done. So if it's nice and smooth, you can't feel any indentations or bumps, um, you know you've done a good job. So we're going to sand all these up and then we'll do the joinery. And hopefully we've only got to do a tiny little tweak to those. All right, let's go. All right, my hot tip on the linisher, or any kind of sanders, to be honest, is 
You hang on to your project nice and tight, nice and tight and firm to the bench. But we don't push it into the belt very hard at all. So you'll see me hanging on tight, but I'm only just kind of feather touching what I want. On this setup, I can do the outside curves, no dramas, but I can't do the inside curves. I can't get in here, so I'll do them on the outside. I'll do them here. Again, trust the lines that you've done, it'll be perfect. Hang on tight, push into here, nice and gentle. All right, that's it. I hope you can hear me. So your hands have to love it. it. Feels nice and smooth. I don't feel any bumps. And there's no band saw cuts in it anywhere. So that'll do for that one. All right, rock out. All right, you're so close. For the last bit, what you're gonna see me do is if I need to, sorry. Last bit, you're so close. What you're gonna see me do is I'm gonna lightly sand both sides. To get rid of a bit of the fuzzy edges, take a little light sand, don't go too far, and I want you to check that your joinery fits. So it doesn't matter where you check it. So this one's, pretty good actually. Once you've given it a light sand, place them together and check if they finish flush. So what you're gonna see, I'll do all the rest, it'll be a little bit fast forward, but I'm either gonna have to use a file to widen the gap just a smidge. This file in particular doesn't have any teeth on the bottom edge. So this one's perfect, because I don't want to necessarily have to take out anything from the bottom. So I'm gonna use the bench vise, but you're gonna see me use this. I'll take a smidge out if I need it, so I can get that thickness. If you put it together and you find it's a bit askew, it might be that you need to take a little bit of the depth out of here. You might need to come down a smidge. So if that's the case, you can use the other edge of the file just to take a little bit off. The worst thing you can do is take too much off. So do a little bit, check it, a little bit, and check it. I'm um, sorry. Um, I'd rather you do that than go too far. So what you're after is, this one's a nice fit now. It's flush on the bottom. It doesn't, the joinery's nice and tight. I can't wobble it around. And I've got a nice smooth finish here. So that one's pretty schmick. So if you're lucky, you might end up with this one. I'll do the rest. Just here, you guys can rock out again. Um, like always, any excuse if you need to go buy more tools, go nuts. Um, my sandpaper, it's just a 240 and a 120. Um, nothing too rough, because you're just gonna scratch up your good work. Oh, and a cork block or a timber block of some sort, so you've got a flat surface. All right, 
I think that's it. You guys can watch the rest. Also, my hot tip, when you're using the files, I want you to imagine, because I only want to take a little bit off it, you'll see me hold the file like this. I'm trying to put most of my weight through kind of the back of the file blank. My teeth, sorry, my blank section is down. And I'm trying to keep this nice and upright. So just do a little, check that it fits. That's all you need to do. So that one's a little bit tight. So it's important you stay upright. So a tiny bit more. All right, that's it, rock music. Hot tip, once everything fits and you've given it a final sand just to get rid of any kind of the daggy bits, take a little bit of the sharp edge off, give it a tiny arras, try not to, because everything fits, don't sand here. Please don't sand there, because you're gonna make it too thin and then you're gonna make your joint loose again. So just clean up the ends, give everything a light scuff. Now it's up to you, you guys at home, how much you want to sand. If you've got a tiny little bit of burn mark, tiny little bit of burn mark, um, a little bit looks fine. Um, totally up to you. Unless you're one of my students here at school, then it needs to be perfect. All right, you guys have been brilliant so far. Now this last step's totally up to you, it's a finish. Um, I've prepared a couple earlier. So, finished, unfinished. Depending on your timber, it's not gonna make a huge amount of difference to the look, but it does add a bit more protection. Um, this one's got a bit of a finish on it. Uh, this ash does not. I'll show you how to do one, but I always recommend um, Scandinavian oil. Um, a Danish oil of some sort, but one that you can wipe on and off with a rag. Um, much better result, less mess, less cleanup, less chance of ruining a job like you can do with lacquers and sprays and paint brushes. Um, Scandinav uh, the, the oils and the rags, best way to go. Also, hot tip. Cut a small rag to wipe it on with and a big rag to buff it off with. Small rag because if, if, you, if your rag's too big, you're just wasting lots of oil for no real reason. It ends up in the rag, not on your project. So let a rag wipe on, like Karate Kid, wipe on, wipe off. Uh, that's it. It's honestly idiot proof. You can't get it wrong. Check it out. Make sure you apply a little oil on the insides. Make sure you get the end grain real good. Sometimes it's tricky. Um, by all means, grab a pair of gloves, disposable gloves. Clean up's even easier. And with this stuff, it's only gonna be on there a minute, I don't know, 30 seconds. Um, and then you can buff it off. 
Like I was saying, there's nothing clever about it. Uh, with the darker timbers, the um, Scandinavian oil makes it really pop. The grain will stand out, turns it a nice deep red sometimes, depending on your, uh, your timber. Ember. Put a bit of pressure into this. You buff it till it's not sticky anymore. Should feel nice in your hand straight away. You should be able to touch it and there'll be no sticky bits. There you go. Works a treat. Well done guys. If you got to this point and yours looks schmick, congrats. Like always, my, my goals are you guys make a few cool things, you learn some new skills, you get to buy more tools, that's my favorite part of it, and you got something you can be proud of. Um, go on, spoil yourselves. More time in the garage, more moments you have with the kids, um, you can't get them back. Like always, leave your likes, subscribes, give us a thumbs up. We love the comments and um, don't forget to check out the other playlist. There's, much, there's a few more um, beginner projects, there's some intermediates and advanced when you're there down the track. Um, keep checking in because I'm adding stuff all the time. All right. Peace and love from my family to yours. That's it, get out of here. Thank you so much for your time guys like always my goals are always you get to oh, talking drivel